In the last video, I told you that this guy is amazing. Did I lie? It should have been me! I want to talk about episode 8, The Fiancé of Despair. This episode is so tightly packed that we missed some side stories and perspective that I consider one of my favorite storylines. So I will talk about the cut content from the light novel and the manga that actually did a good job. And sad to say, this is the last part of the Academy arc. Don't get me wrong, Rudy's not gonna leave the Academy yet. It's just that the next arc is... The newlywed arc. It is the first time that I got disgusted in the series, but then I remembered and I'm still a piece of garbage. The episode starts with Cliff getting angry with everyone. Because the only one he doesn't hate here is Sanaba. Cliff gets this impression that Sanaba is quite a person. Someone who has dreams, something that he have already given up on. And because these two idiots beat him up, and at the time he considered Rudy as a rival because he thought Ares is his first love. But as he walks home, he looked up with chance, and at the window stood a goddess. So Cliff decided to call out Rudy, but what is cut is Rudy actually activated his demon eye. Then when Cliff turned around, he saw he was blushing. And the first thing that came to his mind was, maybe he likes me. It might not be obvious in the anime, but there's this thing going on in the background that fans call the gay arc because we didn't know that Sylphiet is Fitz at this point. He has more sexual tension with Fitz than the other girls. The light novel is very slick with that, and I fucking love it seeing this 45 year old man trying to struggle with sexuality if he is a gay pedophile or a straight pedophile. I hate this series for its romance. Honestly, the night with Eris, most people already don't agree with that. And the one ended up being traumatized is the pedophile? But that's why the Academy Eric has a lot of fun moments. And a bit of rom-com actually. Because I think it's the first and last time they talk about love that I agree. That's why I call this episode the episode of love. Not because the grandson of the Pope and the medieval girl boss who actually pays the guys to have sex with her decided to be wholesome. I call this the episode of love because everyone wants to. Even the cutscenes are about couples getting together, even insects. The beast strand is in heat and a jealous demon lord traveled across the world just to check who risked up his girl. And you must be confused about why this girl is here. Well, she has one goal in mind. Slavery. <laughs> that new Giga video is just stuck in my mind. So, in the manga, Nina gives us a perspective of how far Barigadi and Rudy are. I think they're not gonna show this in the anime, but here's a spoiler warning. Skip here if you want to. Nina Faryon is the daughter of Kala Faryon, the sword god, someone who is currently teaching Eris. They have this rivalry that, at some point, Nina wants to find Rudy and make him her slave just to flaunt over Eris. At this time, she is a sword saint, one level lower than Jaslaine. I didn't care about her in the manga, but damn, in the anime, are you telling me that Rudy saw her blue hair, blue eyes that kinda looked like his god and he ignored her? I know he's kind of gay right now, but come on, dude. It should have been me! Let's just move on to the fight with Badigadi. Badigadi is an immortal demon lord. He's the fiance in despair. Well, he's not actually in despair, he's just jealous that Kishirika talks about Rudius, and he got curious because she said that he has more mana than Laplace. I'm not going to talk about how every town that this man goes is in a state of constant panic because Arinus already made a video about it. So Badigadi started traveling with Ellen Elise to find Rudy. He stopped a lot because being immortal means having all the time in the world. He just lost sense of time. Elena Lise expected him to at least took 10 years to find Rudy. This is a good perspective on immortality by the way. Losing the concept of time, knowing you'll never run out of it. Something that contrasts Rudy. Knowing he's mortal and having the second chance in life, that the time he has is not gonna be wasted. Same as the elf who fucked half of the continent because she has a curse. But even without the curse, she'll still act the same. And willing to stop for the man she loves, and a man willing to remove the curse, something that's never been done before. For a woman that deserves to be loved, because everyone deserves to be loved, even if she's related to this other elf from the best anime of all time, even if you're an immortal demon lord with a questionable relationship, even if you're this guy, someone who I know the future of, just please, won't you just stick with her? She's good, she's 40. Anyway. I took a long time to finish this video, the weather where I live is not good for recording, so episode 9 already aired. This might not be relevant anymore, but 
still I want to post this. And all the comment you sent in my last few video is heard. Anyway, if you like that, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment if I got something wrong or missed. Anyway, peace out.